Hey guys, it's Paul. I'm going to try and explain to you as fast as I can, which won't be that fast, I'm afraid, how I see YouTube working, how I see you, what you need to understand to make your channel a success, and just some sort of technical aspects to exactly how YouTube works to give you a grasp of how you need it to work, right? What I will do it was I will itemize each lesson. So if you can't take in this whole video, because it might take me up to an hour to do this, look in the look at the bottom of the screen. There'll be a bar going across that's cut up into lessons. You can see the lessons times in the description. I'll also add it to my free training platform. Uh, I will add this as a training course category. So you can take it in, in bite sizes. You don't have to take it all in at once. Uh, what is great for me at the moment, though, is if you pause me, Tell me what you're here. Tell me why you're here. Tell me what you're watching this video for, and I will uh, and what you're hoping to learn. I will reply to your comments, and I might be able to point you in a better direction for something that I may not have covered in this video, right? And of course, if you uh, get any value out of this, it'd be great if you subscribed. Right? Let's get into it. Right? Let me just cut it into a crux in this first lesson, and say YouTube wants you to be on YouTube, and it wants you to watch. Uh, YouTube videos that keep you on YouTube, right? So it will promote videos that have got uh, watch time, like, well not likes, comments, but generally watch time, right? So I'm going to come, I'm just going to quickly come uh, through monetization and there is nothing to suggest that YouTube promotes monetized channels. No, nowhere will you find that that is the case, but Nearly every channel that ha that is being recommended to me here, and I'm not a subscriber to all these, will be monetized. So, get into that thousand subscribers, get into that four thousand hours of watch time first is going to be a big deal, right? It should be your first target, because even though YouTube will probably say they don't promote advertised um, channels, that's how they make money. Right, so YouTube takes 45% of all the adverts in front of your videos and you get paid 55% of how it is. I'm going to come back to explaining exact monetization later. But the key factor, as far as I'm concerned, is watch time and comments, right? So if you watch a video, so let's pick a video, I don't know, this one's, uh, these are all pretty short, aren't they? If you go to a video that is 27 minutes long lose fat which is better right if look it's got 115 dislikes now youtube in my mind if you watch 25 minutes of that video and then put a thumbs down youtube doesn't care that you put a thumbs down you've you've watched 25 minutes of this video now remember youtube wants you on youtube right so you've watched 25 minutes of this video and it's had 478 comments, right? So YouTube know people are watching it and they're comment commenting on it, right? So from my stats, I always know that the watch time and comments is what I'm interested in. They're the two stats that I'm really interested in. Subscribers help because as people see you've got more subscribers, it gives you a little bit more social proof. So as I'm nearly 7,500 uh, on my channel, I've, I've seen that, as I've got more and more subscribers, I'm getting a little bit more social proof, right? But really, watch time, commenting, I think is king on videos, right? Let me just dive in here as well and say, YouTube's tough, YouTube's hard. The amount of content you've got to put in, put out, the comments that you either will or won't get, positive and negative, is going to be tough. Uh, but the general workload of getting into a successful YouTube channel, getting past the initial stages of, you know, maybe nobody watching or even people watch to start with because it was a new thing. Now they don't watch or you're putting stuff out that people don't like. It's a tough, tough world, right? And nobody cares that it's your 15th hour of filming to do 20 minutes or that you've, you've edited for seven hours. Please watch this. I've ed ed edited for seven hours. Nobody cares. All people care about is watching your video, right? So try to stay strong. Try to be energetic as you can. Like if I've done, I've done videos where I forgot to plug my microphone in and I've, I've done a 40-minute video and, and the record never worked or it crashed. 
Nobody cares about that. What they care about is what you're giving them, you know, a uh, TV show on, pro on you know, something on TV never says, oh, we filmed this 18 times before we got to this. Please watch it, did it? Stay strong. Know it's a long, long journey. And we're going to get into exactly about that now. Right, I'm going to break down two types of YouTube, two types of video. If you can hack both types, you're definitely laughing, but you may need to look at which way your channel is going to go. So, uh, I'm going to do a lot of golfing examples, and, I've, and, I, and I'm going to do use golf channels as the main examples of this video. So, we're talking short game and long game, right? We're talking short game, I call it a land grab. You've got 48 hours from your video launching to really get the most views on that video. And then effectively that video is put into the archives and most of the time, from what I see, it dies, right? Or it, it lives, but it, nobody watches it, or very few. So you've got a 48 hour window. We're gonna talk about this as the short game um, video. The long game, people call them evergreen. It may be an annual thing that that maybe doesn't get many views to start with, but it gets progressively more views as a year goes by. And these are, you know, people may call them viral, but they don't, they're not really viral. This is something that that you put out knowing that, um, in the two aspects, I'm gonna show you the stats. You put a short game video out knowing I've got 48 hours to get me most views on it, right? So you've gotta, you've gotta let it build and then let it go. The long game videos, you have got, you might be looking at, and this is how I use it on my channel, how many views will this have in a year's time? This is a, this is a long, long forward view. These are more educational videos rather than entertainment videos. But in a year's time, how many video views will I have on my long game videos, right? And if you can drop in, if you can drop in your content where you've got a lot of short game, but every now and again, you, look, you drop a long game video, that's when you really do hit both sort of sides, right? But I'm gonna get into each category separately, right? So let's just jump through, and I'm gonna go to golfsub.com, right? Let's go and have a look at some top channels and see, see where the stats come from, right? So if I go to the top 50, these are the top 50 golfing YouTube channels on the world. Uh, and I'm gonna pick out a few and just delve through the short game stat, right, for the entertainment channels. So I'm gonna to go to, uh, let's see, let's go with Golfholics, right? Let's have a look at the stats and how they build up, right? So we're gonna go videos, and we're gonna see 16,000 views two days ago, 18,000 views, 23, 41, 31, 31, 8,000, couple of bigger ones, no chance, 48,000. So. You'll see it's around 40,000 views, isn't it? That's the start that's happening. And, but they're getting maybe 23, here's what, you know, well, it's a month ago. So they don't, they're not putting that many videos out. So I'll probably, I'll probably go to a daily vlogger because it's easier to see. That they get, of their 40, they're getting 23 within a few weeks of doing it, right? Well, let's go to a daily vlogger because it's easier to see the, the land grab on a daily vlogger. So let's have a look at James Robinson. He, he puts out loads of stuff. He must work very hard at what he does, right? So uh, so that's obviously three hours ago, 2,000 views in the first three hours, 11,000, 11,000, 20, three days ago, 14, 26, 56, 36. So he has 12 to 15. What are we saying? We're saying an average of about 20,000 views per video. And he's doing that within the first week, right? 30,000, maybe a few more, but let's say it's around 20, 25,000. If I scroll all the way down to a year ago, even four months ago, 29,000 views, 23,000 views, right? 24,000 views, a few less, 30,000 views. So the views five months ago, 33,000, 15, 17s, are not that much different to what he's had in the first 48 hours, right? So let's have a look at some others and see. Mr. Short Game, uh, Golf Mate, no, no, Golf Monthly even, Golf Sidekick, uh, let's go Golf Mates because Liam puts it out every day as well. 
Obviously, there's a few stats that are a bit funky because of lockdown 19, 23, 23,000, 30,000, 28,000, 30,000. So we're in between that 20 and 30,000 here, even within the first two or three weeks of the video, right? But even the second, even the first few days, five days in, 23,000 a week in, 20,000. It's a little bit funkier because of lockdown. If I go down, down to five months ago, 22,000, 27,000, 24,000, 23,000. It isn't much more than the original view, right? The original, um, the original 48 hours. So this is what we've got to understand about the short game. A lot of your videos, a lot of videos, I know Liam himself will say, um, he thinks the first hour is the most important to his videos. He can tell within the first hour how many views that video is going to get, right? And when you look at your recommended videos, it, you know, they're all pretty, well, not they're all, five days ago. There's a mixture of, 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 right, so re let's get back to remembering that YouTube wants you on YouTube. There's a mixture of new videos from your, from people that knows that you're probably interested in, and then the long term, the longer videos, the long game ones, but these are the ones that have got a lot of views, right? So it's offering you 20 hours ago, Jack Lee, 20, 16 hours ago, uh, four minutes ago, right? So you're getting three hours ago, Sky News, I don't even subscribe to Sky News, two days ago, BBC News, right? Uh, I'm going to talk about setting reminders uh, a week ago, a week ago, three years ago, but look, 2.3 million views, long-term gains, right? Uh, five days ago. So you get, you get, a, you get, a, you're getting recommended new videos or popular old videos. Short game, long game, right? So let's have a dabble into more long game stuff. Let's go, let's go golf sidekick for long game. No. Yeah, let's go golf sidekick for long game stuff, right? I was going to show you uh, the short game stuff on a smaller channel and how that, that 48 hour period works as well. But I don't think you need me to prove it too much to you. Let's go in long game videos. And for long game videos, you can go to most popular. Now, most popular videos, I think short games entertainment, long games education. Now, if you can long game and mix education and entertainment, you're laughing. So look at the long game videos. A year ago, 700,000 views. How to break 70, 500. What's the difference between uh, 90 and 80? How to break 100, how to break 80, right? So let's, you know, you might say, well, short, Mr. Short Games, a teacher, that's why his long game videos are like that. So let's go to somebody who's education and go to videos and go to most popular and see what their long game viral videos were. Golf cheats, sort of teaching people about golf cheats. Top 10 rules of golf. So this was a big video for Liam. But he's educating people about the new golf rules, right? So in 2019, he's educating people about the new golf rules. But obviously in Liam's way, he has a laugh about it. The world's best golf tips. Uh, pros will not use. Educating. Uh, we glue sandpaper. So it's entertainment, but he's educating people on whether it works or not, right? Let's go to number one. Let's go and see what Rick Shields' is, is evergreen most popular videos are. Are they entertainment or are they education, right? So go to most popular. Uh, dude Perfect. So... The longer, the, the biggest video, or the second biggest, is um, education, sorry, is entertainment with a massive, you another massive YouTuber, but it's two years ago. Uh, straight golf ball, this is, it's a bit of a gimmick, but then he's in ed education. Fake versus real drivers, but again, it's a bit gimmicky. Uh, old golf club versus new, education, a bit of entertainment. I bought an illegal golf club, Edutain, you know, how to get backspins, so that's straight out education. So the longer ones, these are these are longer videos that you can search for, that, that, uh, they, they gain views every month, they gain views and they keep gaining views, don't they? But a lot of, and that's a little bit of anomaly on that channel, because it is a, probably a bit more entertainment and gimmick versus 
education. So if I go to my videos, so we're going to get into we're going to get into the ins and outs of your channel though. But if I go to my videos, look, 258, 92, 90, I don't get a 48 hour kick. A thousand, two and a half thousand, 32 views. I'm not looking, I'm not playing the short game on my channel. I'm playing the long game. I'm trying to hit a video that's going to, that's going to keep getting views month on month for the, at least a year until I do a new video. So I, you know, 2019 video, 2018 video, 2018 video, then I do a 29. So here, look, 49,000 on the 28 video, 93,000 on the 29 video. So I long gamed in 2018 for the year, and then I doubled up for 2019. Same with my other videos. I'm looking, I'm not, I'm never looking at a 48 hour window. Now, maybe I need to start thinking a bit more about Short game videos and doubling up with long game. Um, but I'm gonna get. We're gonna get into to what you should do and where you're at in this YouTube world. Are you a short game? Do as many videos as you can, or are you a a longer game where you're trying to do a video that streams views over and over, right? So let's get into your channel, what you're trying to do, and working out how we can you can go about making it successful right so i've been on a marketing thing with seth godin his marketing seminar and he talks about strategy versus tactic and this is i think it's important and i think it's important for every channel to understand strategy strategy is your overall game plan this is what do you want your channel to be is your channel part of a bigger brand is it just a, is your youtube just part of your business or is your business all about YouTube? So the strategy is, I want to be, say for me, I want to be, um, uh, I want to give great tech tutorials and I don't want to charge anybody for it, but I want to make a business out of doing that and having no customers. That is the overall strategy. Now, the tactics that are involved can change. There's different ways I can make that happen, right? So if we go back to being a golf YouTuber, I want to I wanna be one of the best golfing uh, professional coaches on YouTube, but I want to also deliver fun entertainment and have a laugh, right? That is the strategy. That's the overall mission. Now, the tactics of how to deliver that are things that can change. So there's things that you can try on your channel. There's, there's tips and tricks that you can try. There's things that you can do to try and get more views. Um, are tactics but the overall strategy needs to remain what are we trying what is the end game what are we trying to achieve with this channel or with with what we're trying to do right so we're going to get into strategy versus tactics to make your channels work let's talk about ideal viewers and the strategy behind ideal viewers the bigger the, the, the smaller the niche or the big niche but the more you can small you can you can bring it down the better and i always like to tell people who ask people who's your who's your ideal viewer and you know i talk to a lot of the golf guys and they just say oh people who like golf well there's a there's 10 15 20 million people in the world that like golf but it's not you're not niching it down to why do people want to watch you who's your who's the person that your channel will benefit the most out of um commenting who do you want to reply to who do you, who, who is that ideal viewer and what happens when you get to an ideal viewer you can talk to one person so you might notice on my video i'm just talking to you i'm not talking to a group of people or why don't all of you go and i'm talking to you my ideal viewer on this video for me because i'm a tech trainer my ideal viewer seems to change in every video which is kind of crazy but i do that's how my channel works Whereas if you want to grow a following, I don't have a following, but at every video, all my videos live off search terms. So my ideal viewer for this video is somebody who's just starting out on YouTube, has probably got 20 or 30 videos looking to educate on how YouTube works to go to the next level. So you've probably got 250, 300 subscribers and you, you, you've, you've got the initial push, but now you need to really understand how all this game works, right? So I have, I have the picture of my ideal viewer in my head. 
and my strategy, my overall strategy towards my ideal viewers is moving them on to a productive business, a place where they can make money, a place where they can start their own business and do it. But remember, my strategy is to never charge for anything. So everything I do in my videos, I'm pushing this ideal viewer up and onwards in their business. And I understand my strategy. And then this is a video. One of my videos is a tactic of doing that. But having an ideal viewer is part of the strategy because it's a bigger picture stuff, isn't it? Who is your ideal viewer? Who do you want to answer every day? You know, look at look at Coffeezilla. Is is it? He he, um, he does videos confront um, calling fake gurus out. So he's his ideal viewer is somebody who's looking for confrontation. He wants people to 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 um be interested in the drama but if you're not interested in drama you'd never watch coffeezilla because he's pulling people out corinne's ideal view was moving i think she first started out as a golfing princess thinking it was all going to be women golfers but it's turned out to be more oh i don't want to say it's more over the age of 40 men watching uh her and nick are doing a partner's thing and i, th I think her ideal view has moved as to who's commenting and who's viewing obviously fat burning it's really easy to understand if you're a, a health and fitness guru you want people who are probably overweight and looking to lose weight to watch your videos aren't you? you don't want unless you're doing proper athletic athlete stuff but there's an ideal viewer that that all oh, it will really help if you get in your mind who is my ideal viewer as part of my overall strategy that gets me to where I want to be, right? So think of an ideal viewer and niche it down and come small. And it's hard to do because you think you're going to leave people at the side. Look, if I did a golf channel that said, I'm just going to do, um, I'm just going to do a channel called Doncaster Golfing. People in Sheffield are still going to watch that video. People in London are still going to watch that video. If it's entertaining, but I will get more people from Doncaster watching it. I'll get a thousand subscribers just from Doncaster calling it Doncaster Golfer. The one that I always come back to is French Lefty Golfer because he's niched down to golf, but not just not just golf. He's only just been going, look, he's got 14 videos. 14 videos. He's, he's niched down from not only golf to not only French golf, but also left-handed golf. So I always love the French Lefty Golfer because he's niched, he's niched it down to golf French and left-handed and after 14 videos 777 subscribers right so that he knows his ideal viewers are probably into golf French okay he, he probably takes some right-handed ones but it is niching a little bit to the left-handed isn't he so what's your ideal viewer that's going to be a big question you're gonna to have to ask yourself another part of the strategy and I think it's good for any channel that's entertaining and educating uh, because it works across both things. The strategy of a journey. What journey are you on? Corin's journey wants to be a scratch golfer, right? So Corin's only just taken up golf. So to go from twenty a twenty plus handicap to scratch, the, it's an unbelievable goal. Um, but puts the mind to it. Works in it every day. You can you can YouTube the whole journey, can't you? So the strategy is I want to be I want to be a scratch golfer. Now there's going to be a lot of tactics on the way to make that happen. And you can video it all the way, right? You know, if you're a health and fitness, the, the journey of trying to lose weight or trying to get healthy, the strategy of I need to get to this ultimate end game, what is the goal? What's the journey? Where am I going to with all this? Part of the strategy of your channel, right? And people will follow your journey. People will join you along the road for this journey. You don't have to do every video on it. But I think if you're a new YouTuber, uh, new to you know, creating videos, telling people your journey and, and asking them to come along for the ride. It means all of a sudden every single video, like here we go, Jack Lee, working on his own, working on his own game, working on other people's journeys. I'm one of them. I've signed up for a journey. Uh, it's called the Toolbox. We've got a six-month program with Jack. Moving everybody along on a journey means every video ties into the next video. So when we talked about short, ga short game videos, 48 hours and done, the next one that comes along will probably be a bit more viewed because people are coming along the journey with you, aren't they? So I think as another strategy, think about journeys. How can I say 
This is the journey I'm on. This is what learning I'm trying to do. This is what I'm trying. This is what goal I'm trying to achieve. And keep, you know, keep thinking about the journey and the overall strategy, because you remember the remember the strategy, and that's the journey you're on, isn't it? Final thing on strategies, and a part of a strategy that I try to use, and I think everybody should use, is create, don't compete. The part of your overall strategy cannot be, I need more views than that person. I need more views than this health and fitness guy. I'm into news channels. I need more views. Um, it doesn't do you any favours, and it doesn't, it doesn't gain anything in your channel just competing with somebody else. You have to create... And if your strategy, a part of your strategy, strategy, your overall strategy is you want to do all these great things and you add the philosophy, I'm going to create all these videos. I'm not going to compete. I'm going to keep pushing stuff out. I'm going to keep creating my videos. I'm going to keep creating great content. I'm going to keep, keep sharing it out and moving forward. So if that's part of your philosophy on your journey as your strategy. You're going to be all right, you know. Just keep creating. Don't worry what everybody else's score is. You know, same with golf. No, you don't care what anybody else shoots. No, it doesn't matter to, to if they're brilliant golfers and you're rubbish. Whatever the whatever your score is, is the only thing that matters. And you're going to keep creating better content. Keep creating your journey. Keep creating things to move forward towards your overall strategy, right? Create, don't compete. You know, on social media, Facebook, Instagram, um, Twitter, it's all fair enough. But your your YouTube channel, that's what you're here for, is about creating YouTube content. YouTube wants you on YouTube. YouTube wants people on YouTube. Not all this other stuff. I mean, all that other stuff helps and it's a tactic. But your job, your strategy is to create, 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 right? Right, let's talk about some tactics. Let's get into tactics now uh, and things that work, things that don't work. Uh, and and let's just talk about tactics, right? I'm going to talk two tactics about going live, right? So it's not, it's not the obvious first tactic, but it's one that people don't quite um, see. But look at this, look. Rockstar, London Real, 16,000 people are watching this live now. It's bumped it to the top of my feed and I'm not there subscriber right so live also set reminder here when you go live you get also get this gets bumped to the top of your feed for anybody who is subscribed and what also happens is when anybody goes live so if i if i go here and subscribe to london real subscribe right it's actually going to post it to the top but if it was further down what would happen when you go london here oh i don't say that yeah now, see this. So if you're 50th on this subscriber list, so if I had subscribed to them six weeks ago, you would have been right down here somewhere, right? But when you go live, you bump to the top of the, to the, top of the queue. So it go, you go live here, and when YouTube comes to your homepage, you get live now, you get live here, and you get a set reminder. So... It's a tactic to go live. And it's a tactic that you could play your latest video live, couldn't you? Then post it as a schedule later. I'm not saying that that's probably what I would do. Um, but I would consider if, if part of your channel is you could go live, it bumps you. Look how it's a reminder. See how it goes to the top? It comes right to the top of the list and it's shared. Obviously, we're in lockdown at the minute. Going live is a big thing. It's a good idea. if you And if you're building a community... Going live, Corinne's been going live for a couple of weeks. She's building a community and just sitting and talking to them. So if you've got a load of fans, subscribers, that what that hang on your every word in a, in a way, as you grow, going live is a good tactic to grow towards your overall strategy. To be able to do live Q&As, to be able to tell people about your journeys, it's a good tactic. Right, let me tell you about a tactic that I use that I think does really well. And that is, you will have noticed at the start of this video, I asked you to pause me and tell me why you're here, right? So if I go to um, custom portal, free version, full introduction. Yeah, this one. So what I do is, is at the start of the video, I tell you why, ask you why you're here. 
I ask you to pause me and tell me why you're watching. And uh, I'm evaluating a free version. I have been tasked with revamping. It's, I say, why are you watching? Tell me why you're watching. If it's not in this video, I'll help you out. Now, remember the start, start of the video, I told you that um, YouTube are interested, as far as I'm concerned, in watch time and comments, right? So what am I doing in that video, in that introduction, I'm getting people to comment. Then I'm replying and it doubles the comments, right? So I reply to everybody. Now, when you get too big, you won't be able to. I've got a few to catch up on. Oh, I've missed a few. Um, so poor, So saying to people, I mean, it depends what you do, right? You're not going to say to people, pause me and tell me why you're here. But you might say, in this video, I'm going to teach you how to do this. Pause me and tell me if you've had a problem with that. Or pause me and tell me what your biggest challenge is. Or whatever you're educating, pause me and tell me who do you think is going to win this challenge. Pause me and tell It's something to ask. Make them. Tell them what you want them to do, right? And if it gives you any, if it gives you, if you get any value out of this, please subscribe. So tell them you're going to give them value. Ask them to pause. Tell them, ask them to comment something. Obviously, you come up with whatever you need to relevant. And then ask them to subscribe, right? It's a tactic. It's a tactic that I can change. If I feel it's not working on some videos, I don't do it. If I feel like I've got to add the subscribe request at the end of the video or in the middle, I can change that tactic. But pausing people and asking them to um, asking them to comment, interact, do something, uh, helps YouTube see that people are doing it as well, don't they? And that extra comment in your section will push your videos. Right, asking people to subscribe. I never used to do it. Um, and I don't, I can't tell really through my videos whether it has helped or not, but I've definitely gone up a lot in uh, subscriber numbers since I've been doing it. And what happened was, on Twitter a long time ago, I put out, does that asking subscribe, ask, does asking people to subscribe actually even work? And two or three big YouTubers, over 50,000 subscribers said, yes, it does. Yes, it does. So a tactic to grow your subscriber base is to ask people to subscribe. Look, my number one link here in the header, subscribe, it's free. Tell people that's what you want them to do. I know it might sound repetitive for you and it might sound, you know, corny, but that's what you want people to do if you want to grow your channel is subscribe, right? I wouldn't say jump into your channel and say subscribe. Hey, welcome to my video today. Subscribe. Tell, do, them, do it in a way or drop it in a way that you've given them value and say, hey, if you've enjoyed this, subscribe. If you like my video, subscribe. Don't feel bad about asking them to do what they know they should be doing anyway. Some people need to be told, click this button. Look, my training, my training here. My training, this actually probably gets me more subscribers. Keep training free for all. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, right? And people are subscribing to my two YouTube channels. So don't be afraid to ask people to subscribe. It, uh, some people can be and some people can't be, but most people do ask for your subscribers. Even the very top ones, please subscribe, right? So it's a tactic that you have to try out. Um, if you're absolutely against it, don't use it, but find a way of asking people to subscribe that you're comfortable with, but do it. Right, let me tell you about another tactic I use that has recently been added, but I've, luckily I've done it throughout all my videos. Timestamp, timestamp your videos. So if I go back to, um, where's where's the, uh, doo -doo -doo. I'm gonna have a look for something that's actually, oh, there we go, 38,000 views on this one, right? So what you'll notice now is this, on a YouTube bar, play bar, I don't know what it's called. There, let me turn this off. It actually says, look, share Zoom. Share Zoom webinar to Facebook. Launch the practice area. So what in this video you're watching, on this bar at the bottom, because I've timestamped it, I can, um, it, it, it basically puts it into lessons, doesn't it? Now, what's a good tactic on that is, is what happens when people click on it, uh, on your there, you see the advert came back up. Generally, when people skip around timestamps, the advert plays again. 
So you get paid more because the advert comes on again, right? So it's a bit of a tactic. What you've got to do is you have to put in your timestamps, right? So put lesson times, chapters times, where things are interesting. You have to put zero. You have to do zero. It's zero colon zero zero and put whatever it is at the start. And then you put start timestamps for everything. And that's where YouTube then picks it up. It's a really good little tactic to jump people around your videos, saying if you're not interested in this, jump to that. And when they come back, they might go, oh yeah, I've watched it to there. Let me jump back to that section. Or where did Paul say that thing about whatever it was in this video, right? Oh yeah, it's there, look. Guest participants, jump to 2306, right? Easy to do when you've, Post your video, work out where each place starts. Now, when I record my videos, if you're a tech tutorial, I record them and stop, look, so I know. So in my in this video you're watching now, look, tactics, say hello. The one I've just told you about, subscribe, it's free. I know it starts at 31.52, because what I do is I stop at every recording, and then I can see in my videos where each lesson starts, right? Obviously, if you're an entertainment channel, you're not, you're not doing it in recordings like that. But it's a nice little tactic, and I like that I've done all my videos. So if you're doing some lessons, timestamp it, right? You get a lot more value out of bigger, uh, longer videos. Right, let's talk monetization and other things that can happen. Because obviously you need to make money. You need to, you need, um, the overall strategy might not be to, to make a fortune out of YouTube, but... If the strategy would be, oh, I want to, I want to hire my best friends to come and work with us, and we, and we work together, creating really fun YouTube videos. Well, you need to get paid to do stuff like that, don't you? So, revenue is king, and making money is king, right? So on YouTube, you make money from the advert in front of the video. So here's Liam. It is. I'm gonna turn it off just so YouTube doesn't get. So, um, in front of. Stuart's is the advert. Now, what happens is whoever's posted that advert has paid a certain amount of money for a thousand views, or they will pay a certain amount for a thousand, and you pay more if people click. So, say it's say it's YouTube have sold this advert space. Um, it's probably a computer because it's pointing at me as it knows that I'm into tech. It's probably charging. Um, Let's try and work out the maths on a, on a golf channel. It's probably charging $10, ten dollars for that spot for a thousand views. And then it's probably going to charge a pound for every click or, or two dollars for every click, right? Of that revenue, the creator gets 55% of the revenue. So say this is ten 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 dollars per a thousand views. If it gets ten thousand views, if it gets a thousand views on my channel, I'll get I'll just have a five dollars one. I'll get I'll get five dollars fifty of the revenue of that ad. YouTube tech four dollars fifty. If if it gets clicked on, you get more because you get you get um you get extra for the click, right? Different genres have different paying views um, videos. So for instance, the golf channels. If I go to Jack's, this got a uh, there's no advert there. Oh. It, it this dependent on who's viewing and what the channel's about, right? So let me try. So what's this orange whip? I don't know. This is. Uh, oh yes, I only got 183 subscribers. I'm trying to get to. Um, I'm trying to get to a video. Amy is golf with Amy, right? So what's the video? No advert. So <laughs> that's killing people in it. So basically, what I'm saying is, rogue engineer why is it not playing any adverts youtube's not playing any adverts no wonder people don't get paid youtube ain't playing adverts to people let's go back to to right so now it's a coaching program so again it's probably aimed at me this is coaching because the stuff that i watch now people selling coaching space may pay a bit more right because it's probably a 39 dollar training course on my videos i get paid uh, a lot more because generally the the advert in front of my video is a pr project management um, platform. So let's try this one. Yeah, YouTube's just not playing adverts to me. Uh, marketing artificial intelligence AI for dummies. Selling a book. What's this advert? Oh. 
Yeah. YouTube ain't showing too many adverts uh, at the minute. It's always sort of law when I try to um, explain that. So imagine if um, imagine if it's a golf program that sells for thirty five dollars. It's how to fix your slice training course. It's a thirty five dollar training course. The person advertising that can't afford a thousand views to be more than ten dollars for a thousand, can it? They can't put two hundred dollars per thousand into that advert because it only pays thirty five dollars when when people buy it. Same with computer games. There's only a certain amount people can pay for the advert space. So golfing YouTube channels generally get paid about six dollars per thousand views. So you can work out how much people are earning. You know, as, as you just basically time times the views from per month. So someone like Rick Shields is making a lot of money. Where's my calculator? So Rick Shields per month is uh, is that even is it seventy nine thousand views a month times by six? This is going to be wrong, isn't it? Um, it's how many thousand views? 79, sorry. 79,000 views. So there's a thousand views in a million, right? Times that by six. 474. I've still got it wrong, aren't I? Let me go to an easier one. <laughs> My maths is terrible, isn't it? Uh, 1.8 million. Yeah, so, so it, it's, it's actually 7,900 views. Yeah, that's what it is. So it's 7,900 views. Times that by six. That's how much Rick Shields is making a month on YouTube. Uh, 1,100 times that by six. That's how much uh, someone like me and my golf, who was the other guys. So Scratch Golf Academy, 76,000 views times that by six. Um, 76 or oh, 760. Yeah, sorry, 760 times six. Yeah, sorry, that's already 769 is what I should have done. So they're making $4,000 a month. Paige Spirinak, how much is Paige making out of YouTube every month? Right? Uh, is that enough? Yeah, that's enough. Times six. Nearly ten thousand dollars a month out of YouTube. If that's six, if it's six thousand, if it's six dollars for every, you know, uh, someone like Seb on one hundred and nine, he's only getting forty-seven thousand views a month. So Seb is only making two hundred and eighty quid out of YouTube, right? He's got a lot of subscribers, but not a lot of views. So views is king. Subscribers is not always the end. Once you've got a thousand, look. Eric Cogano, 773 times six. Making nearly four and a half, five grand a month off YouTube, right? So the quality of the advert before the video pays what's called CPM, right? Cost per milli. And the thousand, the, the um, what you've got to know is that YouTube takes 45% of what the advertiser pays and you get 55%. So it does fluctuate, but a golfing channel usually about six dollars. I think I think that's about an average sort of thing for YouTube. But some other channels do go up and down in um, pricing. And remember, there's more than one advert on your video, so it could double up if you've got two or three adverts, right? So you've had a look and you've gone right. I've got a small niche, a small target audience, a small ideal viewer. And I'm not going to get that many views. I'm not going to make money out of YouTube. So what are the other options? There's other options. If you've got a little tight-knit community, you can ask your community to pay, can't you? So I've got videos on... Oh, come on, computer. Um, other ways of crowdfunding. So you've got your little tribe. So you're saying it's not going to be a big tribe. I'm only going to get five or 600 people. I'm not going to be able to monetize. All my monetization is not going to be enough. There's two or three things that I've done videos for recently that will help you monetize your 600 people, right? One is here, Buy Me A Coffee. Buy Me A Coffee is an app that you can go to and basically say to people, buy me a coffee, right? 
So I've just been testing it. I've done a video on it and people can just go and buy you a coffee. It's three pound for a coffee. Buy me one, three or five. They can send something. Uh, you can add a membership on there. Yeah, like a monthly membership, help fund my YouTube channel, five pound a month or two coffees a month. You can sell products on there. That works. So I've got a full introduction on how to use that. Right, another one that I've done is uh, GoFundMe. You can set up a GoFundMe page. So if you're doing some artistic that you don't think is going to make a lot of money, you can create a GoFundMe page. Ask people, this is what I'm trying to do. They can donate whatever kind of money they want. It's always funky asking people for money. Or a really popular one is, I don't know how long ago I did the video. I don't know why you need me to see the video. Uh, where is it? Is the Patreon, right? A lot of people do Patreon where you can say, I have, I have um, premium content and you can sign up via my pre my Patreon account. There's a lot of, a lot of um, creators will do that. So if you want to see videos a day early or you want, uh, con if you want content only for you, or private message me, you can create a little $5 a month membership plan, or $10, or $100. Patreons for people to sign up to be a patron of your channel, of your creation. So between buy me a coffee, GoFundMe, Patreon, there's other ways to fund a YouTube channel that isn't, it isn't relying on YouTube monetization, right? Make sense? A final thing is the almighty merch and selling merch. Um, I've done a lot of stuff with Happy Me and and selling things. You can do, you can you can sell merch, you can provide it, you can drop ship it yourself. I'm not sure if my shop even exists. <coughs> yeah, I don't. Um, merch can be, it depends who you are, what you do. Right, I've got my shop. I don't even know what my shop is. Uh, my... I think it's happy me golf happy me you can create your own uh shops you can sell your hats there's places that will make the hats for you and drop ship them so the happy me hats you know if people bought one um a company in america either they either they either uh, embroider it in america or in latvia if it's in latvia they send it to europe if it's in america they send it out that way and that's a company called Printful. You can do merch and sell merch. You can do Amazon merch where you sell T-shirts on Amazon. It's it's a little bit of extra money and it depends on what your brand is or what you're doing as to whether people will buy it. My, my thought with merch when you're starting out is wear it yourself. Don't over-promote it. Promote your channel um, as... Whatever you want that overall strategy to be, let your merchandise mirror the strategy, but but don't get lost in merch. Remember, create, don't compete. Your job as a YouTuber is to create YouTube channel, create YouTube videos. It's not to create loads of T-shirts. It's not to create hats. It's not to create um, uh, hoodies that no one's going to buy. You will waste your time with merch. When you're starting out, yes, it would be great if everybody in the world bought one of your T-shirts, but generally, not many people are wearing other people's merch. You don't walk down the street and see a top YouTuber's merch walking past you, do they? It's a drop in the ocean as to whether merch makes money, unless you're a really, really big channel and your tribe is um, obsessed with everything you do. You know, like a band, a rock band or something. Yeah, they buy merch, don't they? But even then, do they buy it on that much level other than going to concerts and buying it at concerts? Yeah, they do. What I'm saying is merch, you can do it. Merch is easy to do. Merch is easy to do without any money. It will sap your time, though. It will sap a lot of your time and your energy, especially when you do all this thing about doing a... Do, you do a shop. Have I just closed it? You do a shop, right? You do a shop. You spend ages doing a shop. I, mean, I do this shop to, to do... To do tech tutorials on how to have a shop, right? So I don't, I doesn't lose, I don't lose any sleep over people not buying Happy Me hats. But if you do all this work and it takes you hours and hours and hours to create it, 
and then nobody buys stuff. It can be soul destroying on your YouTube channel. And remember your strategy was your YouTube channel not to sell hats, right? So I'm not putting you off merch. I'm just, I want you to be wary of the time it takes to do merch and to mess about with designers and pay designers if you can't do it yourself. And then expecting other people to wear it, um, it's, not, it's not something you can expect. But there's, there's options for merch to make some extra money, but I wouldn't get obsessed about it unless your strategy is to become a fashion brand. If I wanted the Happy Me fashion apparel to be the overall strategy, I want everybody in the world to wear a Happy Me hat, then I would go down that road. But remember, that's not your strategy, or probably not. It's whatever you're teaching in your YouTube channel, right? I kind of went off topic there, because I kind of strayed you away from merch, didn't I? Do it, but don't spend loads of time doing it, would be my advice. Right, conclusion, you made it to the end. Congratulations if you made it this far. Um, keep creating. I hope, you, I hope you just keep creating. Keep on your journey. So what we take from this video, I, I probably didn't explain everything as, as well as I would have liked to have done. But you've got an overall strategy. Your overall, what do you want your channel to be? What do you want your business to be? Is the channel part of your business or is the channel your business? Is it all everything? Stay on the strategy. Remember what that strategy is. Remember who your ideal viewer is. Take your journey and take them on your journey with you. On And then there's different tactics to do that. There's little funky things that you can try to get more people on your journey, right? On your channel. Um, remember the, the short the short term videos, the short game and the long game. Short videos, you've got 48 hours. So be wary of when you post your videos. Long game. Don't be worried on your long game videos if you don't get many views in the first week. If your goal is to get views over a, over a year. A lot of people are looking at that short game stuff though. But don't get obsessed with your, with your subscribers. If you're going to get obsessed with anything, get obsessed with watch time and comments. Get more watch time, get more comments. YouTube will promote you then. Because it knows that you people are watching. And YouTube want people to be on YouTube, right? I hope it helped. I know it was drawn out. I know there's a lot to learn. As I say, come to Paul Nicholson. My training's free. You don't have to sign up. More views, more um, lessons on uh, things that you can do, other tactics, uh, and other things, and MOTs. I've done MOTs on people's sites to, to give them ideas on some of these strategies and these journeys. Uh, hopefully to give us some ideas. You can't sign up for it. There's nothing to sign up for. You can just click around and view. Leave your comments on my YouTube videos. I hope that helped. Losing my voice. Have a great day. Keep creating, keep creating, keep creating. You will get there. But remember, it's going to be a long road and it's hard work. But, you, but it'll be worth it when you do it, right? See you soon. And if you made it this far and you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Cheers.